Eric. Next up is Josh Denning. Josh is a professor of biomedical informatics and medicine, as well as the director of the Center for Precision Medicine and vice president of personalized medicine at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Josh's uh, training is easy to recall because he was an undergraduate, a medical student, a resident, and a fellow at Vanderbilt. So he's a, uh, he, he, he's a diehard Nashville person. He is the principal investigator of nodes in the electronic medical records and genomics, or the eMERGE network. He's also the principal investigator of the nodes in the pharmacogenetics research network and the implementing genomics into practice network. Josh, is. Uh, we asked all of the speakers to send us a fun fact to share with the audience today. And uh, Josh is a diehard Louis Louisville uh, Cardinal fan, but he also pointed out that he'll become a uh, hockey fan this week since the Nashville Predators made it to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time. So join us in uh, welcoming Josh, who will be talking to us today on the All of Us Research Program, Accelerating research, Precision Health for All. Join us in welcoming him. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, today I'm going to talk mostly about uh, our, our work in, uh, with the uh, Precision Medicine Initiative All of Us Research Program and uh, describe it broadly leading off of what uh, Eric talked about and then walk through um, uh, some of the aspects that we as the Data and Research Center um, uh, are going to be focused on. And, you know, this is, um, uh, I think we're, uh, this was started um, uh, by uh, President Obama in 2015, and this is a picture from uh, that uh, State of the Union address. And uh, one of the things I like pointing out, and I think we've already seen, is the incredible bipartisan support that the Precision Medicine Initiative uh, has had. Um, and uh, with the uh, recent um, budget that was passed, um, that we uh, now have um, an increased budget for this year beyond what we had um, uh, initially uh, last year and expected for this year. And we've seen that continue. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of the core goals set forth were set forth in a working document that was created by the advisory committee to the NIH director. Um, this is available online and, and uh, sets forth a lot of the basic principles for um, the All of Us research program. Uh, it's available, you can read it, and is generally still um, uh, references the broad perspectives. Um, as uh, Eric and, and Dr. Harrington talked about, the um, goals are at least a million individuals that will be launched longitudinal recontactable that will um, share a variety of information and, and leveraging the strength of um, our modern ways of accessing data, um, uh, leveraging electronic health record um, and other types of data to surround an individual, as well as, of course, biospecimens, baseline evaluations, um, uh, things like surveys. We really want to focus on engagement and giving people data back and making them partners in the process. And they have been partners in the process from the beginning. Um, we have uh, participant representatives now, because we don't have any true participants yet, that sit on the steering committee and, and uh, give us advice. And we've had um, uh, input from the beginning there. And we really want to focus on diversity. And that there are so many reasons to do that. You know, a, a unique advantage of this country is the diversity of our country. So, of course, uh, uh, there are many tools to get at uh, health. It's not just about medicine, it's about health and its perspective. Um, and we will leverage uh, survey instruments, and, um, and we're developing these, we're testing these with a variety of um, uh, literacy levels, a variety of populations across the country. Um, and uh, refining them, borrowing from existing protocols, and actually trying to more intelligently select what questions we ask people based on the expectation of having data like their electronic health record. We'll have a limited baseline exam, which can be intermittent over time. We, of course, expect to pursue genomics, um, uh, electronic health records we've talked about, and a variety of other things, which include sensor data, both uh, mobile and wearables, and stuff that could be at home, um, uh, looking at geospatial data, looking at other kinds of data that individuals can share with us, um, and uh, expect to get into imaging data and things like that in the future as well. Uh, the real power of this, of course, is involved in integrating them together. And this is where having a partnership with individuals, participants, to give us that data and interact with us longitudinally is going to be so important. We also will leverage researchers, not just uh, the researchers that are part of the AOS, uh, all of us community, but also um, other researchers that would come in and contribute data to the resource to make the resource smarter over time. Um, and then, of course, technological uh, solutions are a key part of that. 
Um, a, a key part of our work at Vanderbilt has been uh, use of electronic health record data for discovery. I give you just one example of um, the power and efficiency of that, um, both uh, looking at um, uh, what we have in our DNA biobank, which has about 240,000 individuals now. Uh, we live in a marketplace that is fragmented, so individuals go to different healthcare systems, but still, um, despite that, uh, we have uh, you know, an average of six years of follow-up, about 100 billing codes, about 600 lab tests, um, 600 drugs, 130 uh, n clinical notes, narrative documents that we can uh, have on an individual over that time, and about 10 radiology tests. And all that information essentially comes at free. Um, uh, the clinical uh, cost is, is, is already born, and so the research cost is, um, uh, is, is, is minimal um, after you um, uh, uh, re-architect the data for research. And then this is an example of um, one phenome-wide uh, association study uh, replicating a number of associations. Each individual point there represents an a, a individual SNP um, associated with that uh, line uh, phenotype, and everything to the right of that faint blue line would be a significant result. And uh, these kinds of studies have been done. There are hundreds of studies using the EHR data, um, both discovering and replicating known associations. And they also do things like um, have been effective and good tools for looking at pharmacogenetic effects, which is something we think is something that we can um, explore and give impact back to individuals um, in all of us. This is the organizational structure. Um, at top, you sort of have the administrative structure, which is composed of both NIH individuals as well as individuals across the awardees. Um, the Participant Center, which Eric directs, the Biobank at Mayo, um, Participant Technology Systems Center at Vibrant, and uh, Vanderbilt, uh, along with Verily and the Broad, and uh, some other partners, is the Data and Research Center. And then um, uh, the main recruitment arm, um, uh, by numbers, is the healthcare provider organizations. We have seven regional medical centers, to typically academic health centers are partners. Um, uh, the next speaker, Usha Minan, is associated with one of those HPOs. Um, the VA is participating as well. And uh, then we have pilots with the federally qualified health centers. Um, and we hope to expand that uh, over time. This shows the awarded uh, HPOs and um, uh, fed, uh, both the regional medical centers and the federally qualified health centers across the country. You'll notice um, if you look at the geography, we have the Northeast well covered um, and uh, California, um, uh, you know, Arizona, and, and we kind of lack both the Northwest and Southeast um, of the country. And, and so to um, initially, one way to capture that is, is, is programs like Eric's program. So Eric's work to recruit direct volunteers is really a novel model for all of us in such a, such a kind of study to pull these individuals across the country um, and allow them to go to uh, convenience clinics, um, to, uh, to enroll, share their data electronically. Um, from there, um, we intend to get essentially the same kinds of data from both individuals that come from healthcare provider organizations and uh, those that come directly enrolling through the program. Um, it's the same consent documents, uh, the same surveys will be filled out by both. Um, as we get into mobile and other sensor data, we intend to use both um, populations for that. The EHR data will have to be um, uh, captured in different means. Um, and then we'll have the same physical measures, we'll have the same biospecimens. Uh, the biospecimens all go to the biobank, usually within 24 hours, um, uh, from any of these thousands of collection sites. Um, uh, all the data comes to the Data and Research Center, and then we will also centrally add other types of data um, uh, articulated with the participants' uh, data uh, contributed through other means. One of the ways that we've been pursuing really since the initiation of the program is something that is called Sync for Science. Um, this is a protocol that is uh, being developed and will be piloted um, this year with a number of the major EHR vendors um, to allow an individual to basically uh, connect through their patient portal and authorize another party to receive essentially the entire complement of EHR data and have that, um, uh, uh, have that updated as new data rolls in. And, um, and uh, this protocol meets the meaningful use uh, stage three requirements um, for API driven sharing. As we get this data, we initially are bringing into a raw data repository. And our idea is that we gr bring the, the raw data in. Um, over time, we're going to make it smarter um, through a variety of curation techniques. And the curated data repository is what's going to be accessible by researchers um, and through a variety of avenues. Um, and we want to leverage the, the work that we've done and many others have done through how do you mine EHRs, use of natural language processing, and, and de-identification tools to remove obvious identifiers. Um, uh, 
for for 99 of research doesn't need to know identif identifiers um, and we want to support that and protect patients uh, privacy in those regards uh, obviously things like imputation and um, uh, and things like that with other kinds of omics data as it comes in this picture is an example of deep learning and and uh, this is probably very familiar to this audience this is um, a, a google experiment automatically capturing from their image data and you know um, some people point out that there's also a glass of wine that's missed in that picture. Um, it depends on your you know, threshold of which is more important. My kids, it would be the, the pizza. Um, so, so, so one of the ways that we want to innovate with all of us is how you access data. So uh, traditional approach in most of these cohorts is uh, bringing researchers, uh, making the data available for researchers to download and you go through authentication process and application process, verify your computing infrastructure, meet certain standards and download the data. There are a number of challenges with that, especially when you start thinking about a million individuals, a million sequences, um, and the amount of other kinds of rich data we'll have on these individuals. The approach of all of us is typically to bring the researchers to the data, have a cloud platform that's elastic, um, uh, centralized, you know, sort of the data security, um, a lot of the protocols, have both computational and uh, portals to make uh, easy on-ramps and to accelerate um, the model of getting into um, the data and being able to use it for meaningful research. We want to build a variety of tools to bring researchers onto these platforms. Um, uh, some examples are uh, there, given there. So um, this, these are mocked up versions of our uh, local uh, cohort builder where you can go in and create criteria. You can run those against the data set and get a population and then review the patient's charts. Um, uh, all the Vanderbilt people, of course, are also patients. Um, but some participants won't have EHR data. But you'll be able to review their data um, and, uh, and, and look at it, define a population. If you need to, you can bring it over to a computational environment, bring in different tools with um, environments like Docker. Um, and uh, also through points of point and click uh, run, things like GWASs and FIWASs, um, easily through interfaces. Make the um, common uh, analysis trivial to do um, is our goal. And this uh, kind of summarizes some of the timeline. So it was first announced in January uh, 2015. Um, and the first awards, uh, RFAs were in November. The first award was a pilot in February. Um, we were the pilot testing a lot of the product protocols across the country and communication awards. Uh, in, in May, we're happy to announce uh, over the last week, we um, just uh, uh, achieved authority to operate on our um, uh, in technology stacks across both the PTSC and the DRC um, and, uh, and for FISMA moderate status. And uh, we just received IRB approval on Saturday. Um, and uh, we have a, another component that has to be uh, approved by the IRB that we're working on, but we are very close to being able to launch. Um, we're essentially entering an environment of, of implementing those IRB changes and, and uh, having a code freeze uh, to start our beta launch with uh, initial participants that will scale up uh, incrementally across the country um, uh, over the summer. Um, and that will be with the HPOs and kind of a, a, a very um, deliberate process um, of who we engage um, initially as we test the system and refine as necessary. Um, that will include our initial surveys, baseline measures, the uh, blood and urine collections, and um, uh, later on in the summer, the EHR data. And um, from there, um, we will be working to develop a lot of the other modules as well and make plans for the future, including our genomics plan and researcher data tools um, uh, over the rest of this year and uh, into next year. And here, uh, I'll just end with a shot of uh, the initial gathering in July of all the researchers uh, in PMI. So um, uh, actually, that's not all the researchers. That's a small fraction of the researchers, but that's the people that were in July. Thank you very much.